Finally. After long last, the update is finally out. Hello, the Fantastic V here. Today I will be analyzing Beast Worm Simulator. I honestly didn't expect it would take this long to make the video, probably because I have gathered a lot of footage beforehand, but I've mostly just been playing it trying to get to the key parts of it. Cause it is a huge update, and I also had to wait for the update to come out too, so that's also why it took a while. Also, let me show you this new room. This one is specifically for Beast Worm Simulator, because it is one of my favorite Roblox games. Now, if you haven't seen any of the other episodes I made, let me introduce you to these billboards behind me. Over here, we have a picture of the game that I am analyzing, the topics that I am analyzing, and the two score billboards. This one is the one that counts the points. So if I like something, I add a point, and if I hate or think something could have been done better, I reduct the point. For this one, it counts the rating. On the left side, it counts the points, sort of like the previous one. And then on the right side, it counts the total points. So if I add or deduct a point, it adds a point on the right side. So if it says something like 15 out of 20, then that means there are 5 points that could have been improved. Now, without further ado, let us begin the first topic. Now, before I totally start on impressions, I have to mention something. I'm only going to be going over the impressions I got for this update. So now, let us begin. Also, unfortunately, my recording is like a potato right now, but oh well. So anyways, there's a lot of things I'm excited about in this update. First thing first was the noticeable things, like example, the new things added in the map. You've got a few new areas now, and a bunch of new types of items, and you even have a new bear, known as the mom bear, which gives you quests about bees and stuff, like level up your bees to this amount, or give them treats. So in the 30B area, the mountaintop area, you find on it, and he's ready to give you some super hard quests. And if you complete all these quests, he'll give you this thing called the Star Treat, which allows you to turn any bee into a gifted bee. And if you look under the jar, you can see this giant black bear that is dancing. And under him, he has a diamond egg that you can get. And I got another lion bee. Wow. There is also this ant area right here. But I'll talk more about the gameplay features and gameplay. For now, we'll just talk about the other things that I got impressions from. There's also the secret area I found, with this winky basic bee face on it. I assume it's a hint for the code WINK. And you also have this level 8 tunnel bear, which my bees stand no chance against currently. There are also a few new dispensers around the area, that gave you blueberries and strawberries. And now, Panda Bear has new quests that go with the ant area. I decided to go to the mountaintop area and see a brand new item. The Porcelain Porto Hive. With a cost of 250 million, but 500,000 storage. Really? Go, and we are done here. Okay, uh... Ah! <sighs> One million hun- Yes! Yes. 
<gasps> what? Whoa. I got a gifted lion bee. I got it from... I got it from a silver egg. Wow. What is the bonus? Wow. That is too awesome. So yeah, that is about all for the impressions I got for this update. There is quite a bit of new things and content I saw in the game. The new gifted bees and the leveling system. The new mama bear and treats. Some new panda bear quests. And then you have this new area where you fight ants. And the 30B area where you can get quests, incredibly hard quests, from on it. And quite a variety of different types of treats like sunflower, strawberry, blueberry, pineapple, and star treats. And these new star amulets. Plus, we've got a new enemy called the Tunnel Bear, and the King Beetle drops an amulet, but it has a 1 out of 7 chance to do that. And if you were able to defeat the Tunnel Bear, you get a silver gifted egg. So now, I will be putting all the impression points I got for this update on the scoreboard, and then we will go on to gameplay. As you can tell, the impressions itself was pretty long. There is so many gameplay mechanics to, well, the game itself. But first, I will start with the basic mechanics, and then go up to the advanced mechanics. When you first start as a beginner, you're able to access around four fields. And you are also able to get quests from Black Bear, and Mama Bear too. Plus you have access to the first shop, which has some basic beginner stuff, which is easy to get your hands on. You also have this other currency called Tickets, which allow you to buy special items. And you can get more bees from this egg dispenser. When you're ready to make honey, you just go to your hive and, well, make honey is pretty simple as that. Plus, if you click on them, you can see all their stats, what their level is at, their energy, which is a pretty neat feature. The good part is the bees, though. There's many different types of bees, and plus, each bee can become gifted now. In order to get different types of bees, you can either have a very low chance of getting bees from different sources, or you can get it from royal jellies. There is also different mobs you'll encounter, like ladybugs, Rhino beetles, which are low levels, spiders, mantises, which are mid levels, werewolves, which are pretty high levels, um, and then you have the tunnel bear and uh, king beetle, which are very high levels. I like the addition of treats, and how bees like certain treats in order to level them up faster. I really like this new leveling system, and how when you level the bee, it gets better. There's around three types of pollens, red, blue, and white, although there are items that are made more for blue or more for red. Usually, one color will rival the other, and you'll have that color more than you get the other color, depending on what you get. Plus, there's red and blue B types too. If you have more red, you'll probably get more red. If you have more blue, you'll probably get more blue. Some people like the scythe, and some people like the bubble wand. Although I usually use both, so I usually use bubble wand and blue fields, and scythe and red fields. And with this new porcelain dipper that collects both quite a bit, I use it in multi-colored fields, like the cactus field, the pumpkin field, or the mountaintop field. There is also a vast amount of tokens that allow for more pollen collecting. Plus ones that allow you to do more mob damage, like the Rage Bee, which gives you more rage, which allow your bees to have more attack damage. There's also bees that give you more speed, like the Hasty Bee, and the Ninja Bee, and the Shocked Bee. Bees that give you extra blue pollen or extra red pollen. Also, if your bees' tokens are out, there is also a token link. If you collect that, it will collect all the other tokens. There's also this function called, uh, Critical Chance, which allows you to do more critical damage. If you have critical power, then that critical attack will do more damage, both to mobs and to pollen. So if your critical chance is 100, you'll collect 100 
100% more pollen, or twice the amount. If it's 200%, you'll collect three times the amount, 400%, four times the amount, and so on. Gifted bees also have this ability called Inspire, which stacks up to 50 times and allows for two times pollen per token. Stacks up to 50 times. But, they do only drop the token very rarely, so you'd need a lot of gifted bees if, you wanna, if you'd want to stack up to like 50 times, probably. Another key mechanic is conversion rate and instant conversion. Conversion rate, I think it's basically how much you'll collect while, I don't know, doing pollen, and increases your collecting rate, and how fast your bees make honey. Instant conversion is how much honey you'll make while you're collecting pollen. So, example, if it's at 10% instant conversion, 10% of your storage will be honey. If it's 50%, then half of it will be turned into honey while you're collecting pollen. Another mechanic is luck. It basically allows you to collect things that easier. Like example, honey tokens. You'll get more from honey tokens, and you'll find them more often. You'll also find tickets more often from mobs and stuff like that. A useful way to get it is through baby love and through some items. Now let's go into amulets now. There are three types, ant amulets, a king beetle amulet, and star amulets. Ant amulets have bonuses, like example, you can get conversion rate, move speed, and critical chance, plus white pollen bonuses, red pollen, and blue pollen bonuses from it. Same with the star amulets. For the king beetle amulet though, it's a bit different. Rather than a pollen collection bonus, instead you get a field bonus from like the bamboo field or a different random field. If you click on that badge icon, you can see all of these collection stats. Each of these increases certain stats and gives you tickets if you are able to complete them. Tickets can be used to buy stuff like the golden egg, the star treat, which can turn any bee into gifted bee, or certain event bees, which have special stats. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, you can also get these booths, which allow for more pollen collection in certain fields. This game is beginner friendly, which allows for a great start in the game. Plus a really great leveling system, which uses streets, going to their favorite fields, and many certain other ways to level them up. Plus a variety of different items and fields. And many different stats and mechanics that add to gameplay. A few different mobs that you can fight. And a pretty good quest system too. Plus a variety of different bees that have different pollen collecting techniques. So the gameplay of the game is really good. Although it's not that fun to play, it is definitely really satisfying to play, which most of these simulators are really good at. Although I believe this one does it the best in my opinion. So now it is time to go to the point board and start on the design category. One of the things I noticed was the great design of the map. It's simplistic, and it doesn't take your eyes too much off of the other things. And I like how a lot of the decoration of the fields look really nice. You know which fields you're supposed to go to, due to the fact that there's a plant that represents every field. Plus, I like that rewarding feeling when you go to the star amulet area, and that music when you go in there too. And I like how after you pass the five egg area, you go into more dangerous territory, and so it plays different music. I also like the design of a lot of the items here. One of my favorites are the porcelain items, and the guards. Everything seems to have this distinct art style around it. And a lot of things seem to have faces, like the tickets have faces. And occasionally, faces will pop out of the largest pumpkin in the pumpkin field, the largest pineapple in the pineapple field, the largest sunflower in the sunflower field, and the bubble wand on the blue HQ. I also like a lot of the color choices they chose. Like a lot of it is blue and red, 
which I really like, which goes around the blue and red pollen collection. And I like how it shows the stats of the items that have bonuses, and the tokens that you have. So if you have a red or blue boost token, you'd be able to see how much of that boost you'd have, which is really cool. I also really like how the ant challenge is like this carnival theme thing. So if you listen to the music here, it has this carnival feeling to it, this carnival vibe. I like how Onnit decided to go with a uh, carnival theme on this one. It sort of suits this area right here. Also, it's really satisfying when you have really good stats and you're able to reach giant numbers like 10,000 or 100,000 even. And I like how when you get a critical, the number flashes green. I also really like the look of each token. A few of my favorites are Photon, Tabby, Music Bee, and Crimson and Cobalt. I also like how when you click on their high plots, you can see their bond, energy, how much they gather in a certain amount of seconds, how much they convert in a certain amount of seconds, and how much speed they have. I also like how gifted bees have a yellow glowing ring around them. So the design is simple, but it looks really well done. And there were a lot of really good design choices, like the fields, how you see all the stats, and the design of all the bees. And I really like the carnival theme that the ant hill went with. And I like how when you go into the star amulet area, it's like this really cool, rewarding vibe. I also really like the font that they chose with the game. It sort of matches with the art style they chose too. Now with that all covered, I will put the points on the billboard and we will go into the theme category. So you have watched this video for all the major sections. If you are interested in my channel, consider subscribing or liking the video. Or you can join my Discord, link in the description. So now I will talk about the theme. The theme is about bees, and it does a really good job to put the theme into aspects about all things that bees do. You've got honey, pollen, bears, flowers, and it does a really good job at conveying a theme of bees. So now, I will be giving my points on the theme of the game. This is honestly one of the most unique simulators I've seen on Roblox so far. Because all its gameplay mechanics are really unique. A lot of simulators usually have a thing where you collect currency faster through rebirthing and all that. You get items and you just collect it faster. But with Bee Swarm Simulator it's quite different. You have many different mechanics that will help you out with that. And you may even collect in certain fields faster than others. And sometimes there's even events to collect a special bee. In every update it seems to get less and less repetitive when collecting stuff. There's a variety of different items, and a lot of simulators don't have much variety in them. And that's what I think makes this simulator stand out as one of the best simulators in Roblox. So that's about it, and now I will be giving my points on uniqueness. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this analyzation I've done on Bee Swarm Simulator. If you know a game that I can analyze on Roblox, feel free to comment down below. And if you'd like to know when my next video will be up, just subscribe and hit that bell icon, or join my Discord and you can keep up to date on there too, if you're active on Discord. Anyways, thank you for watching this video, have a great day, and bye!